Stop and Shop, day six. The Dan York State of Mind program is brought to you at part by Lookout Rhode Island and Taco Comfort Solutions. I have no idea who the good guy and who the bad guy is in the stop and shop strike. Uh, my inclination is that labor certainly has an argument. My worry for them is that they go six, seven, eight, nine, ten more days and whatever they get in a deal, they lose in terms of at least interim cash flow. Uh, I don't know how you resolve these things. Corporate America wants to keep up with corporate America. Local employees don't want to lose traction. And as one local employee at a stop and shop told me in the parking lot the other day, we just don't want to go backwards. We have some expertise on labor law here from Johnson & Wales University, and you're going to meet the professor who will guide us through some of the conversation coming up in a couple of minutes. It's great to have you aboard. Thank you very much for tuning in to my state of mind. And obviously, the world's state of mind, Catholics and more, are just devastated by this. Uh, we all just stared at the televisions yesterday. I have, uh, France and, and Paris are, are, have been on my, oops, we're supposed to go, we didn't get their list. Uh, so I have not been to the cathedral. But uh, anybody who has, I'm sure, feels an extra sense of heartbreak, let alone the people who are there on a regular basis. The, I think, relief for a lot of us is, is that it's an accident, although that's just part of all the tragedy, right? Uh, nobody hurt, thankfully, other than one firefighter who was doing his best. One firefighter risked his life to make sure he could secure the crown of thorns, which, of course, pretty poignant here during Holy Week, don't you think? So. Uh, rebuild is what President Macron promises he will do. The foundation was still a little uh, sketchy this morning in terms of you know, what they could build and how they're going to go about it. Millions of euros are being poured in from folks uh, there, and it all makes sense. 800 years of history. I mean, 800 years. I mean, think, think about that. Think about a building 800 years old and what it means. You know, we are very desensitized to this kind of stuff. We, we are very inward focused in our lives these days. It's about us and what we're doing, uh, but there's time for reflection when something like this happens in terms of the centuries of progress, uh, where you are with your faith. Uh, there's, there's a lot to think about, um, and there will be over the course of the recovery there and the years it'll take to rebuild. Uh, it only enhances my desire to get to Paris. We'll push it up on the bucket list. In the meantime, uh, the Mueller report is coming. Two days. And it's going to be redacted, and then uh, the fight's going to begin. But what I get a big kick out of is the White House reportedly all panties in a bundle over this whole situation because there's a lot of anxiety as to whether... The president's going to have his wrath for those who have spoken, and reportedly there is more even in the redacted version than the White House is very comfortable with. So this is kind of like crumbs to a half a piece of bread to maybe a half a loaf, and if it ever gets out, the unredacted version, it's a full course meal still on this investigation. What's ironic, I think, about this is that Congress is looking for some special attention on this. And William Barr is going to just give everybody everything simultaneously. So if you're online and you're looking, you'll get it as quickly as your members of Congress will. So obviously we'll have some things to talk about later in the week and early next week. In the meantime, our conversation tonight is about the stop and shop strike. Headlines about the Northeast. Headline today, day six. But let me, tell you, let me tell you something. You know, as you should know if you watch regularly and if you're tuning in for the first time, where you've been for the last five and a half years. Thanks so much. But here's the thing. It is uncanny how many real-life stories, like day-to-day, hour-to-hour stories, are resolved the day I focus on it in the early afternoon. I'm giving you, what do you think, Anita? I'm giving you at least two to one that by the time the workday is over today, the strike will be resolved. 
So I'm doing the show today for the benefit of the employees because every, I swear, every time we do this, we tape at one o'clock in the afternoon, every time we, well, it's an overstatement, but many times when we do this, the show becomes obsolete. So if you're watching at 7.30 or midnight and the news came down that they had a deal, just know it's the power of this show. In the meantime, uh, happy Easter. Here's the, uh, the background. Shame on them. I am so disappointed. Yvonne Bento normally works the deli counter at the Somerset Stop and Shop. Today, on the picket line with her fellow union workers in Fall River. I give them 100% of my energy, my work. I treat that company like it was my company. The workers were visited by U.S. Congressman Joe Kennedy and Bill Keating on day five of the strike. To choose between going to work for a very meager raise that goes right out the door for health care costs at a time when a parent company sits on $2 billion in profit. The company points to raises offered across the board and increased pension contributions. The union is worried about health care premiums going up, more self-checkout machines, and changes to benefits for future employees, even if current workers get to keep them. We're not close to a deal yet. We still have a long ways to get to the deal. Um, and uh, the company has to come off the, the greedy proposals. Stop and Shop President Mark McGowan says he cares about the associates and stands by their comprehensive offer. Yvonne Bento, after 20 years with the company, had this message for McGowan. How long did it take you to make the money that you make? Shame on you, but happy Easter. <laughs> she just forgot Wicked. Happy Wicked Easter. Uh. Crazy. Professor, welcome. Thank you. Uh, Roger well, Achille is a much. labor attorney and management attorney, and the last 15 years has been uh, teaching business management and labor negotiations and dynamics at Johnson and Wales University, and is a North Providence native who probably used to talk like that. When you, you got out, you got out, well, you went to Boston, which is not a lot sometimes better. Sometimes it breaks down, right? <laughs> I, I can't help but reveal it. It's true. We got to get her. Uh, <laughs> APB. Uh, for what's her name? Oh, uh, we'll 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 double check. We, we she's invited. Uh, we'll we'll double check on that. Uh, this is hard. This is hard. What's the executive summary on, on your on your look at this? We'll get into some of the, the not only the the details but the concepts that I think are really important here. Uh, is there a good guy or bad guy well, in this one? You know, it's difficult to say who the good guy or the bad guy is without knowing what's going on in the negotiating room. I'm sure they all have their idea of what is fair. Um, it seems that we're hearing more and more from each party as the days go on. Good guy or bad guy, I'm not quite sure yet, but I would imagine that that assessment by the public will be uh, significant in how perhaps things turn out. Meaning what? Public, well, I mean, public, public, public sentiment. Sentiment, you, know, you think, will affect the negotiations? Sh well, it, it can. You know, uh, you start off negotiating privately, just the two parties at a table, and then, of course, when you go on strike, you're bringing it out into a public venue, and that brings the party in as, you know, I would say uh, uh, certainly an influential party, and many times the way the public looks at it will determine the outcome of the particular strike. How do we determine how the public looks at it? Well, I think, uh, I don't know, one way right now it seems as though the parking lots are somewhat empty. I don't know what that would exactly say, but should that continue, Stop and Shop will certainly find it challenging. Yeah, okay, uh, yeah, uh, duh. I mean, that's a duh question. That's a mm -hmm. stupid question, actually. But did the, uh, well, some of the stores are shutting down. They have limited mm -hmm. hours. Sure. And all you got to do is stop by a couple of these, and, 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 and picketing employees will remind the customers, A, that they are scabs, B, that the produce is obsolete. Mm -hmm. uh, at least it was for the time that I was there. I think I was there on, when did they go out? Six days? Six days Friday, well, I believe. Yeah, I, I was there the day they went out, and... Yeah, the employees were were verbal. Uh, mm -hmm. They weren't mean spirited, but you know, who, who likes being called a scab, right? Uh, sure. The uh, the warnings though to the customers, and it was really interesting to see the number of customers. Out of ten, four didn't even know what was going on. 
that the world is kind of like, oh, you know, and so, so people walking up going, oh, mm -hmm. well, what's going on here? We're on strike. Oh, you are? And, you know, on Friday. Yeah, and three sure. of the four people, three of the four people turned around and said, okay, I'm out of here. One crossed and uh, some were coming out. Uh, but now that's, you know, day six, it's resonating. Now people mm -hmm. get it and they choose sides. Do you think, the, do, do you think that the stop and shop has got to know, though, that public sentiment is always going to be with the employees? And, you know, what, 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 what strike of this kind has ever had public sentiment on the company's side? When you're saying private sector or public sector, you know, I think a lot depends on the type of industry and if there is a lot of competition. If the uh, customers right now believe they can have a win-win situation by not crossing the picket line but still getting their favorite product elsewhere, right, then, um, as I said, it's going to be challenging for uh, stop and shop. If it was an industry in which customers had to go to that particular employer, then um, sometimes it's a flip of the coin, uh, depending on the inconvenience to the customer, which way they would fall. All right. Public sentiment being what it may or may not be, the dynamics of the negotiations and what corporate America is uh, trying to accomplish here when we come back. Stay with us. So we get a little bit of an apology from the Stop and Shop president to uh, the customers on on this strike. I I, I, I have to tell you, uh, brand loyalty is not the expertise of my guests nor mine. Uh, I don't think most customers are worried about getting an apology from the president of Stop and Shop. They want to know if the store is open, and they want to know where they can get their stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, I think there is a habit in loyalty that, that happens these days, but the loyalty, the loyalty stuff is, has certainly diminished. Let's talk about some of the concepts here that, that are going on with, with this strike. You've got this Dutch company that owns the joint. And reportedly last year they had $2 billion worth of profit. Mm -hmm. um, everybody who thinks labor is correct in this chirps about that. But the way you get that kind of profit is by being competitive and by being smart and running your businesses the right way, right? The stop and shop employees seemingly are uh, in a place where they think they're just arguing for status quo and they feel like they're starting to fall backwards. And there's an ask for more contribution to the health care plan, there's an ask for a contribution, uh, more contribution to the pension plan, and there's a small raise. And they feel like it's either a wash or a loss. Uh, Talk to me about that dynamic and, and the different objectives and how they don't match up right now. Well, you know, right, when you're negotiating a collective bargaining agreement, there are going to be different provisions. Some will favor, I imagine, the union. Some are going to favor management. Some of the themes that um, we see in this particular strike are common themes. One that you mentioned is the pension. Um, I believe we've even had a handful of strike activity recently in the Rhode Island area. I can think of the first student strike. That was also um, regarding a pension. Or at least and about pension the health of the pension plan. The company was talking mm -hmm. about the pension plan not sure. being healthy. This too is part of the conversation with Stop and Shop. Absolutely. And you find that pensions are not as prevalent as they once were. I think the latest figures that I've seen in the private sector, you may have approximately 16 percent, perhaps, that have a defined pension plan as some aspect of their benefits, whereas back in the 80s, that figure could have been as high as 60 percent. So you're talking about some common themes that we've seen recently in the strikes and how these themes right, resonate with the public. We've spoken at the last segment. Um, when 84 percent don't share a pension, does that type of uh, labor dispute resonate with the public? Well, the, the you know how many employees at Stop and Shop are around long enough to benefit from their pension? Is, is, is Stop and Shop and the bulk of the employees the kind of full-time assets that actually go there for a career and rely on their pensions? Well, I wouldn't be able to speak uh, directly to Stop and Shop. I know usually. Vesting in a pension is anywhere between, on average, 10 years or so. So um, to the degree that Stop and Shop has senior employees past that particular vesting time, I wouldn't know the particulars. Well, I think that's kind of, I think that's part of, of what the public needs to know. The other thing mm -hmm. is that, <laughs> the other thing is, 
I'm not sure that the employees are really all together on what it is they're arguing for. This happens a lot. You have 37,000 employees uh, who are on the job, on the job, and each of the locals have a little bit of a different nuance in their offer. Mm -hmm. uh, I got six different stories from six different people on the picket line as to what they ex what they understood about what was in contention. That's a problem. Well, that, that can be problematic, certainly, and then you have a large bargaining unit, and I'm sure out of all of those areas that you discussed, everyone has a different priority of what they would like to see resolved. So bringing everyone on the same page so that they can resolve the strike would be challenging also. The context of we got to give, we, we got to give too much and we're getting too little versus, on, on the part of the employees, versus the company that's saying, hey, listen, the deal that you have, all other percentages of the amount of people who have pensions, for instance, the deal that you have versus the private sector in retail across the board is so much better than what the competitors are offering. I know you feel like we're starting to <coughs> dig into you a little bit, but what we deliver is so much better than what our competitors deliver, and you need to evaluate it based on that context. That's their argument. Right, and I think that um, that's, that, you know, one could say that's not the full argument. I mean, a, a contract is negotiated by two parties. So wherever the parties stand at this particular point in time, whether it is a competitive wage, less than competitive wage, benefits, et cetera, that's the product of negotiations throughout the year. Well, it seems like the wages are very competitive, mm -hmm. right? They're $17, sure. 20 $22 an hour for, for some of these folks. I, people might be surprised that mm -hmm. there's a professionalism to their hourly wage, seems to me. It doesn't seem like they're really complaining about their wages either. It seems like they're complaining about their benefit programs. Mm -hmm. Why? What gives? Well, uh, what gives, that's what they're discussing now, I guess. I mean, fortunately, I believe since the strike, they have been negotiating every day. Um, that's not always common. And as long as they're at the table, hopefully uh, there'll be some degree of resolution. All right, what, is the, uh, what is the factor that, 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 that calls uncle on this? We'll talk about that in general when we get back. Stay with us. You know, as I said earlier, tell you about the stop and shop strike. What I worry about for the employees is that they stay out long enough that whatever they get in the negotiation isn't even enough to recoup, recoup what they lost day to day. I don't, know, I don't know what that day is, and they won't tell us, of course. Uh, but, you know, this is hundreds of dollars in health care contribution annually, uh, as, as much as six or seven or eight hundred dollars, depending. Um, I think less so in terms of their, their, their pension contributions. But say it's $1,000, $1,500 you know, on an annualized basis that they look like they're taking a hit on. They got to do the, the, the union leadership's got to make a it's got to make a measurement here as to what the good faith decision is to go out, mm -hmm. right? Because some of these employees, they're out a week or two. No, they absolutely. Didn't, they, they didn't gain any ground. No, absolutely. Whenever a strike occurs, there will be financial injury on both sides. That's just the way it is, and it ends up who can withstand that particular financial injury better. Usually the right? company has got $2 billion in trailing cash flow, right? Well, Usually? Right. I'm not, I'm not a, I can't speak to, you know, the operation of Stop and Shop or how that plays out, but um, as you said, these are uh, the striking employees do not get paid while they're striking. So that's a significant injury to the family household. In and your experience yes. as a labor attorney on both sides, mm -hmm. you, you've experienced both uh, the strikers and the striked against, correct? Yes. Uh, how often is a deal to recover that which was lost during the strike made part of the settlement? Well, I can just, just from my experience, it's not uncommon to have that as part of the negotiations that are going through right now. Of course, as it goes on longer, it makes it much more difficult when you in order to bring that in. in but when you're negotiating, yeah. do you set it aside and say, listen, we want to recoup, and mm -hmm. we, we'll get back to that one. Uh, let's talk about the systemic deal going forward for years to come. You get that sloppy Joe sandwich all kind of tucked in, and then you come back and say, okay, we're almost there. Mm -hmm. Now you got to pay us for going out on strike. And the company generally is like, that's your problem, not our problem, right? Then you, you start at zero, you figure out what the max is. Um, for stop and shop employees that are watching this, do you think they have half a chance at all? 
of recouping what they've lost while they're out? You know, it's, it, everything is on the table, and I don't think it's so far-fetched. As I said, I have seen those types of agreements before. It really depends how close they are, the tenor of the agreement. Can there be a chance of recouping? It's up to negotiations. What is the, what is the future for businesses like this and union employees in general? It seems to me that corporate here is also suggesting that they're also one of the few companies in the retail business like this that engages unions. Mm -hmm. And there are plenty of other places that just say, you know what, we're not, well, we're not dealing with unions. You're right. There are plenty, uh, plenty of places that are non-union, and we have seen union membership declining consistently um, over the last 30 years. This particular industry is more unionized than others. Uh, Why? Well, it could be uh, just uh, traditionally the unions have been strong in these particular areas, the type of jobs, the type of workers, type of benefits that are either provided or not provided. But it does remain one of the higher unionized industries that we have. Versus? Well, versus, um, you know, May, perhaps the IT industry. I can't really think of uh, a particular industry, but uh, what do you think public sentiment is in general for for public sector for private sector unions? There is a difference between mm -hmm. public yeah, taxpayers generally like to beat up on public sector unions more readily, I think, than they do private sector mm -hmm. unions. True, you think so? Well, that could go back to perhaps the discussion we had earlier, where you can only get your uh, particular services from the government and so when strikes occur it significantly impacts the the residents where nowhere else there's to go. nowhere else to go and so with this particular strike there are, there appear to be plenty places to go and, and so it allows a little more freedom for the customers and the public so my psychology at the top of the show is always whenever we do a contemporary story like this that the issue will be resolved before this whole show airs uh, on the uh, on the chance that it's not, mm -hmm. what's your guess? What's your gut tell you about how long this look think this this job actually will go? Well, I know uh, the the only thing I can say is market basket. That was a uh, one that occurred a couple of years a couple of years ago. That went on for about two months, I believe. And um, let's just hope they're at the bargaining table now that this can get resolved quickly. It really depends, I think, on two things, how the customers continue to receive the particular strike as well as how the parties conduct themselves during the strike. That could have a, a play in how things end up. Appreciate your perspective. I appreciate being here. Thanks Thank very you. much. Thank you. Final word and we come back. So uh, again, I, I hope the show is obsolete. Uh, my guess is that it wasn't. Um, and I, you know, I feel for the stop and shop employees. Interesting perspective from the professor that the customer base will be a deciding factor here. Uh, hard to track, certainly the register, but you know, nobody wants to go into a store where it's striking employees, so that might be a non-starter. I don't know, we'll see how it goes. We'll see you tomorrow here on Our State of Mind. We'll talk about Holy Week and some things happening on Good Friday. And talk to you on the radio at three until six on WPRO. Good night.